board have escaped being captured and plundered by the Algerians and other African pirates who infested the Mediterranean coasts simply because on the pirate ships, listen to what it says, because on the pirate ships, there also happened to be some persons or uh, some person or persons who have been admitted to this degree. So they're saying that the people on the pirate ships were Royal Ark Masons and Knights Templar and the Mediterranean pass a Fasimal, which appears on this page was used by the noble John Worthington while serving as United United States Council at Malta in the Mediterranean Sea, it is a document of ethical maxims rather than an official passport. Like those generally issued by travelers, the past makes notes that the prophet's journey was from Mecca. So they go on and go on and go on and go on. But here is the past. And what the past basically states in Arabic is that by punishing of, of their grand council, which is clearly, move me out of the way, another royal arc master mason pirate that a person that is carrying this or is affiliated with this seal is actually able to go across the waters. And if a pirate boards their ship and then they hand this to him, the pirate a dip. Isn't this supposed to be pirates? How are the pirates giving passes now? If, if they're giving passes for other pirates. So this is again, inconclusive evidence that what the world is dealing with is plunderers, but there's no greater treasure. There's no greater cherish, treasure than the divine feminine. This is why what they're trying to conquer, even when they say they have a pillar, it's because they've taken even countries like Colombia. Look what they did to Colombia. They've taken countries like Brazil and the Amazon. Look what they did to the Amazon. They've taken countries like Russia. Look what they did to Mother Russia. They've taken countries like Alkibulan. Look what they did to that. That is a pillar for them. And then what they do is they also teach the males to do the same thing. That comes across in the cartoons. That comes across in, in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the, the love stories. That comes across in every single thing that's embedded in the male's mind. Because obviously... There is that immaturity of feeling that competition. Instead of enjoying everything that's going on, you want to compete with it. This is what we're dealing with. A jealousy. This is why I said you woke up right in the middle of a hotbed. We're dealing with a force on this planet right now. My goodness. All of this stuff that we have to keep doing to, be, to get more things happening for people to become more aware of what's going on. I'm telling you all this extra stuff that's going on, what people are talking about, I believe that all that stuff is a last ditch effort. All we have to do is wake the women up. All we have to do is let the divine feminine aspect of ourselves know where their power is and then let them do what they need to do. Other than that, we'll be standing in the way and we'll never be able to enjoy anything great. I do not want to explore horrific lands. I do not want to cross into the over the pillars of Hercules, over the wall where the horde is, into the uh, into the black forest where it's only a swamp with death and mosquitoes and pestilence and things that eat that there. I do not want to go into those spaces. And I'm telling the divine masculine within all of us that if you don't wake up the divine feminine, she's going to remain asleep. And these pirates are going to keep plundering her until this becomes the reality. And every man, if now we want to polarize it, that goes out there and thinks that the only relationship that we can actually have with women is to actually have sex with them. We're only perpetuating this. It's the reason. And then also, let me explain to you why. Now, as I said, sex is like the DMT of the engagement, okay? It's like, it takes two things, maturity and real wisdom. There's actually real knowledge that has to be tied into actual general, what you would really use set four or really use six four. Now this doesn't mean that tonight you decide not to give up any to your lovely husband because now you think this is being used for someone else. I don't want to kill it for anybody here, but I'm just saying, when you really know what this stuff's for, let me show you how it would get really obscure of how to use it 
So my text here says relationships beyond sex because what I'm working to get males and females alike to understand is that, ladies, if you're out there and you're telling your man that he's only got to be with he's only going to be with you forever and he's never going to go anywhere, you're disempowering yourself. However, this is a catch 22 situation because if he's not mature and he's not aware of what I'm talking about right now and you're not mature or you're not aware of what I'm talking about right now or does it make sense to you, any of those combinations where one is missing, it's going to miss fire. That's how sensitive a relationship is. I'm sure each person has been in here to watch how fragile a relationship is. This is another area where it's very fragile because when one person is not doing it, it messes the whole thing up. Let me explain to you why. Now, technically, for the woman, the man is not supposed to be like, shoot, you only talk to me. I don't want to see you around nobody else. I don't want you calling no other guy. I don't want you doing anything. Fellas, have a hard time with that. But remember, it's not women generally that are going out sleeping with everybody. Generally, they can go and talk to another guy and not do anything with him and that'd be okay for them. It would be only then the male's paranoia. But here's also what happened that males don't like. When you want to actually go and do something on your own and have a great time or, 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 or do anything beside be around her, she's like, no, you need to go where I'm going. You need to do what I'm doing. Where else you got to go? Why don't we go together? It's Valentine's Day. And you're complaining about that. That's how it becomes a catch-22. Because if you had to let her have other men that she's actually talking to and that she's learning from, as long as those men are actually mature and aware of the things that I'm talking about right now, then it would keep growing. But remember, and this stuff is so difficult to communicate, a master in the game never allows anyone to take up too much of their time. Listen to what I'm telling you. When you're out there with it and everything, everybody's loving you. He <laughs> he Imagine, you know, the goddess, she's fully aware of herself. All these suitors are out there. They're having a great time in exploration, but she's got a cutoff point for that. That's actually what keeps them like this. She hung up on me. That's what keeps them in interested. And then also likewise for the male, if you're ever a master in the game, you know not to pour it all on and not to like every single moment you call her, hey, hey, what's good? Hey, what's good with you? Now, any woman that accepts this, this is the part of the perpetuating problem. Hey, what's good with you? All right, that's good. That's good. So so you, you sleep over there. So what'd you learn last night? All right. Okay. So I'm coming. All right. All right. All right. She's good. Oh, man, she makes me feel great. Thank you call her again. So anybody that's pouring it on that thick, you already know what happens to those kind of guys. Now, what, how has he lost? He's lost because he's not realizing that all if he pours too much into that, he's going to lose the game. Not only with her, but he's also going to predominantly lose the game with himself. He's going to become so distracted on that one womb that he's going to forget that he's supposed to be an explorer. Now, remember, I'm talking to the internal and the external alike, however you want to take it. This is why things don't work out in relationships. This is the great arcana, though, because everything is relationships. You may think right now that, well, why don't we get on to, you know, some of the more deeper stuff? It doesn't get any deeper than this. We cannot get beyond the space that we're in society right now until someone starts learning this. Now, let me keep going. So now let's say, for instance, you learn how to get turned on by a person's culture. Their actual, their, their underpinnings. They actually been working on themselves. Instead of trying to attract everything, they're working on themselves. They're now enriching themselves. They know stuff. They got skills. That's way more appealing than just a, mo a momentary situation and so you're talking so yeah you know i've been i was actually inside of dindara and i did a meditation in there and uh i was able to spread my sacred energy through the space so the guy's like damn this is really beating this other chick who just you know she was just talking about how she bought like chanel number no. five last night and this one's been the dindara do you see the the difference now also realize that that investment, going to other places, learning different things, exploring other people, that is an investment in self. So if at any point something is blocking you from doing that, 
you're being pillaged. So let's keep going with this. Now, let's say I have seven of these kind of relationships. Women that I talk to, we don't cross into that realm of DMT, basically, for, con for, communicate, for, for connection. Because that's like, I'm going to tell you in a minute, only really used for two things. But we are totally connected when it comes to our awareness. And we also know when to cut it off. This is great. Man, I love when we have this opportunity to connect. I'm about to get out of here. I got to go do a couple things. All right, great. That's how life is supposed to flow because now you have infinite streams. You have awareness, connections. You have everything that you need. You're filling up, right? Versus if you just have one thing going on, well, one is too close to zero. That's what a friend of mine used to always say. So here's what also happens. Now, the, the, the heresy in society today is the reason why, especially with the Catholic churches and the Christian churches, they want to put this taboo around the sex thing. Notice how if anybody's present during this time, uh, generative components are out in the open. So it's almost like as a kid, you would understand what this does. This wasn't seen as X-rated. Now, this is seen technically as X-rated, even though you see a lot more in the reality right now. But when, uh, as you're a child, this kind of, oh, titties, booty, you're going to this frenzy. And what's happening is, is that there is this action that keeps occurring in reality that's saying that, hey, this is eventually what that turns into is this is something that you want to do. This is something that is a mark of manhood and womanhood. Once you finally do this, you lose your virginity and then blah, 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 blah. And there's this huge buildup that you're supposed to go out there and actually have sex with someone. Now, this is a society where that is completely, that program is completely set. And we talked about this earlier. Once that happens, now there's a lackluster effect of the energy because you didn't even know who the person really was. You didn't have that time. That person never even invested time in themselves. Generally, and this is something we've all been through, so I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just saying we got to fix it. You haven't even had any time yet to really grow up and to learn who you really are in the first place before you now you're already making that kind of connection and commitment with a person. But because they don't know what they're doing, you don't know what you're doing. And only society, as we know it, has been suggesting this. Now you can see how dangerous it could be only for the fact that, one, it kills relationships. Because it doesn't allow the two beings to ever really know who they truly are before they go into this phase. Two, if you don't know how to do Tantra, which is Tantra in itself is one of the hidden secrets and mysteries of, of, the, the, of the real arcana. Right. The real arcana is actually centered around Tantra. This stuff is, is dangerous in many ways, especially if you don't know what you're doing. But it is a specific art. It is a specific level of knowledge. So if somebody doesn't have that specific level of knowledge and doesn't even actually know how to connect and is not trying to make a child. What are we really doing with DMT for physical connection? So you see what I mean? If if a, if both parties don't, if one he doesn't know Tantra or she doesn't know Tantra and he's not trying to have a baby and she's not trying to have a baby, the two most important things that sex are really used for can't even happen between these two. So they never even really had sex. This is the, the truth to it. They got involved, but like kids, they didn't know what they were doing. And that, which would should have come last in the t context to, it's a buildup. If it ever happens, it's a buildup. You learn this person. Then you realize at some point that maybe you want to connect with the person on, or it wouldn't be a maybe. You would know, I want to connect with this person on this level. But it would definitely not be something that happens within a few days. So because of that happening, now everything is kind of out of order. And this is why, even if the relationship continues, now the person feels like they own you. Because in, in effect, because they've twined around you, they kind of do in a certain way. And that's why it's important for people who are connecting to under, understand what they're doing on the, the metaphysical plane. Because let's say if the woman doesn't know what she's doing and she gets entwined with a male that also doesn't know what he's doing, she will still be twined possibly. In more, more cases than not, the goddess is going to be twined more than the explorer. And this guy is going to be ready to run off. 
And, but when he runs off, you're still going to be connected to him because it's like a coil. And then now you're connected to a person that you don't even know. You don't even really like them because they did that now. And then now it's another thing on the board in the game to chalk up a loss. You take an L. <laughs> no pun intended. I mean, it's just because the, the God of Ashir is an L. But anyway, so, uh, the, so the reality here is, is that, let me finish my notes here because I'm almost done, but these are the key components to life. This is the conversation that few can stick into or have because of the level of awareness that's happening on the planet right now. There's no awareness of what the sacred key really was, how it was hidden away, and that's synonymous, that becomes synonymous with woman's power being hidden from her. How woman is now made to depend on man. Now basically where we're getting everything from is trying to get it from us. Huh? Now woman's thinking man's supposed to be paying for her something, buying her something. How can you buy somebody something that has everything? Unless we've got hooked to like Prada purses versus uh, 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 um, lotus blossoms and, and orchids. You see what I mean? Like if, if, we're, if we're hooked to the false luxury, now lux, lux is light. So lux is everything made from light. The goddess is lux, is light, is loose. So the goddess actually has every single thing manifested in the, in the physical world, fruits, trees, every single thing you can think of. So how could that being be looking to some other being to give it something? That would throw everything off right there. That's why we have to put the power back where the power is so that way when the box is powered up, now all of the multiple realities, the multiple levels of things and how things can be done. So when women activate, men will begin to see the potential of what can really be done. And this will also open our explorations. It'll open our levels of awareness. It will allow us to put down the conflicts, the possessions, all of those kind of things, because those are not accepted. Those are, not, those are not appealing traits. So as long as this world makes appealing traits, some dude that just says he has a bunch of bread and, you know, he seems to have his way with the ladies because he's got some gift or gab and a few, you know, a few necklaces or whatever or a Fortune 500 job or whatever you can put in that category, as long as that continues, we'll always be thrown off and we won't even see that's actually at our own detriment because we have a group of, uh, of pirates back here regulating and capitalizing on every single thing that we have going on. They're capitalizing on our progeny. They're capitalizing on what we're creating, what we're abandoning. That's why people are abandoning their children. Supposedly they found 35, almost 35,000 children underneath a military base inside of a complete underground area that Hollywood has set up. And there's so many now names that are coming out. This may connect to what they were saying about a big, huge pedophilic bust that they're doing right now where others are going under the carpet because they have so many records there. The people who were actually coming there and enjoying this sick house that they've created and all those beings that were there that were abused. And that's why this gets this is a high stakes game. And what I mean by that is that if we're not waking up the goddess and we're perpetuating sleep of the explorer, the atrocities that are occurring while the being is asleep is weighing on all of us. So that's why you have to come back into who you truly are. You have to, as a male, come back into your, mas your, ma your mastery. As a male lion, extend the lion's paw to the goddess and pull her out of her grave. Let Point her back to herself. <laughs> And let's get this thing actually happening here and just realize also, again, if, if you don't see this in yourself because you're an androgen, you won't see your own self-worth. You won't see your own values. The polarities, us being split, us having all this stuff, is, it's affecting us. It's costing us. And that's why we're living in a world that feels limited. It feels hindered. This is 100% what is being detailed here today. This is what's happening that's making things a buzzkill. 
So when we remove these things in our space and we actually carry out this sacred code, this is a code. Like I was trying to come up with a way to let everybody understand how this is a code to the matrix, how the tetragram, the tetragrammaton became the code to the matrix, how the Taurus is the code to the matrix, but ultimately how that just means a awakened human being. And the reason why it's a code is because each person has to learn how to unlock it within themselves. So I can give you support. I can give you my strongest hand, but it's still for you to actually realize the importance of yourself and to pick yourself up and to raise yourself up. And what I have to do, though, also is I have to make sure that I'm not disempowering you by making you believe that if you're in the position of supplying all the power, that somehow it's coming from me. That's how you master the game. So that way you don't never you never overcommit. You never are in an uncomfortable situation where somebody feels like that you owe them something that you could never give them anyway. Or also that you feel like that something belongs to you in a space where nothing belongs to none of us. Like, how can you take another being and say that that being belongs to you? You got to check yourself at some point and say, when that's done to you, do you like how that would be done? Now think about on the metaphysical level, because that's really where it's all taking place at. And who have you given yourself to? And what has that person? That's why if, if a person is asleep, they don't even know who they've given themselves to. Some of the times the relationships that we're in, the person has given themselves over to something else. If they're asleep, because they don't even know who they are. So something is definitely taking possession of those jewels. And now they at times want to take over you. So this is where maturity comes in. This is a next, the next phase of your existence in infinity. So my last notes here are, the evidence, once again, and I, I need to uh, load one image that didn't get in today. Let me see if I have it here. It's about that this constellation, when you finish this map, let me go in here real quick. I think we were over here. Yeah, see that image, that may have to be for part two. But when you finish this map, which I finished this map through the cosmos, let me see if I have this image. In, in Syrian, which is Kemet, which is what you call modern now Egypt, there's a map that matches this map. And I can't, it's not here. I have to, I have to clip it and then bring it back over. But what it shows is as this center column continues to go up, as it says that, that arrival, this massive column, as it keeps going up, it points to the hippopotamus, which is also near the Pleiades. And I thought it was odd, you know, that when I was concluding this level of awareness, that higher self made it a point to explain to me about the hips that it was all in the hips. I'm like, okay, this is going too far. I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's, it's serious. It's in the hips. It's something that you're missing about the hips. And I was like, beside the obvious? And uh, it was like, but yeah, because when you look at, see, in this sacred geometry, the goddess's body is the whole key to the whole thing. Like if you want to go into other realms, you want to do other things, you just need to understand this geometry. And that's why, if you just even look and you know what you're looking at, that becomes enough. You don't even need to touch. It depends on how tempered your system is, meaning that if you wanted to attract all the beings in the world, which I don't know why you would want to do that, but that would actually be a step-by-step -step plan to keep tempering your attraction and never lose your attraction. So this would be like, let's say, for instance, we jump on the phone. We have this amazing conversation and then you just can't get enough but I always cut the conversation off and I move on. And then whenever we connect again, it's amazing. You even forget that you're mad that I wasn't even talking to you for that period of time. We have this conversation, it's enough. That's called tempering because if a person gets too much of you or what they feel like is enough of you, what happens? Well, we all know what happens. So this tempering effect, I, I wanted to bring up because and this is my last thing here. I'm just trying to get finish getting this off. The hips. <laughs> so
So what happens is, so I was explaining first is how if you were taking your time and you were actually looking at every piece of the goddess, this increases the level of attraction. It's only when you're, you're just seeing the whole thing, you think you know what you're looking at, and then you try to get everything that you can out of it, and then you're gone. You, you've, you haven't penetrated the goddess. You have not, as they say, uh, uh, penetrated the rites of Isis, okay, or went beyond the veil, right? Because you haven't went inside. You haven't seen, you, you're seeing her, but you don't know what you're seeing. Like they were saying with the sacred cut. So what this was about is that the hips of the goddess is the center of the power because it's through the hips that, now mind you, I was being explained all this before I saw the constellation and the ancient maps that were in Chemist, but it was basically explained that the hips that hip point is where all the power is coming from because it's through the woman's hips and then through her womb that has the power to actually bring forth this child. That in the hips is all of the strength of this goddess. And I was like, yeah, I, I can really see how that works. You know, just be, you know, I, I can see how that works. And then it said, now take a look at this. And on the completion of this map, which I'll show next week, you'll see the map go right to what the combatants had de depicted as the hippopotamus constellation, the female hippopotamus. And of course, as that story of creation goes, that all the human beings and the different variants of the human beings and the living forms that are here came forth from the hips of the goddess or the hippopotamus. So that is it today. I know that this probably makes total sense. I know it may be a lot of readjusting that one needs to do, or maybe a little bit, depending upon where you're at with this whole thing. But I know for sure, because I check this stuff back over and over and over and over again. I have millions of years worth of knowledge to cipher through to find out if this is the truth or not. I'm only interested in the truth. I have no allegiances to anything. I don't owe any gods. I don't owe any goddesses. I don't even owe myself. I am nothing. I am clear. I have no motives. I'm not looking to get something. Because I figured out when you do all of that, you unlock an immense power within yourself. And it becomes your foundation. You're stable. And it doesn't matter where you are. And what's going on? So I'm going to tie this into the first part of my conversation. Remember when I told you that in a relationship, if that relationship is great, no matter what's going on, you're going to be great. You're going to feel good. That relationship starts within you. There is a divine feminine and a divine masculine inside of you that just like Yahweh and Asherah broke up. Now, I think part two is for me to explain now up into the part we're at right now, what actually happened. Once this starts to occur, you have a masculine group of gods, which are actually were run by the, Dru the ancient Druids, which look different than what you think. But these ancient Druids believed that the power came from the sun and that when the sun uh, beamed its rays on the ground, that that's when man was born from the beams of those rays, respectively to the soil quality of that land. <laughs> and they became patriarchs. While in the ancient tradition of the goddess, what is known is that the goddess actually rose like a tree out of the ocean. Once again, another deep mystery. The goddess, according to all the ancient stories, rose from out of the ocean as a tree. This is why we almost uh, we almost got one image here that didn't get a chance to uh, get through. This is the unlocking of the awareness of why we are explorers. Right here, you will see on the top of this Mount, the real Mount Maru, which is called um, Samara, which oddly sounds like Sumerian. You see there's a tree when you finally get all the way up there. That tree is the goddess. She grew out of the ocean, 
which is all of these areas that you're seeing down here. And everything rested in her branches. As we go forward, we find also more ancient iconography. I think this one's worth about 120,000. On this right here, you see that this is called the seven heaven. It is seven goddesses. Remind you of anything? This is, uh, it's is oriental stylized. Let me blow this up a little bit more. Let me blow this up one more time. This is the real Mount Maru. This is what the explorers are exploring or the explorative aspects of ourselves. This is the seven goddesses or the seven wombs. So do you see all of the knowledge is replete? This is also why you see the sky and the earth connecting. The same thing that you see uh, with the Jed, I believe that's uh, Jeb and Newt, I believe, where the sky and the earth connect. This is once again the, that symbolism, as we see here, the sky and the earth connect. But this is a direct reference to the androgynous aspect of our creation. That you have the ability to connect with yourself, that you're actually parthenogenic, that internally you have a masculine and a feminine pole. And that when you're capable of coming into that level of awareness of power within yourself, you're self-sustained. Now you can really start having fun. <laughs> now you can really have what we would say is a relationship. Now you can really have what we would call sex because you would know yourself. So you would know exactly how much of anything external that you needed. And you would actually maintain as a master in the game, because as I said, it's high stakes and there's pirates on board. So we got to remember on this big vessel, because this is the earth. You know, there's a lot about this knowledge. It goes into deep mysteries, all of those wombs we've just began to explore. But remembering within ourselves also the connection that we have to this goddess also gives us the path through life and death. And that's why it was so important. That's why they tried to take it from Hiram. It was a key. It was the key to life and death. See, this went beyond your relationship and whether you're going to be in love this life. It actually went into whether you knew how to live again. And living again is a stage of, con it's a consciousness. It's a stage of awareness of self. And that's what I got to say today, Tribe. So hopefully, you know, that's been enough for you on a Friday night. You know, it's just a Friday. You know, this is just us coming in and really saying these days and these times that we're living in, the level of wisdom that we receive must be in a greater measure, not equal, but a greater measure. Surely when the world starts looking like this, the great mysteries are being revealed they get revealed from an energy that that's why you'll feel the change. You don't feel changes because of something that you read. You don't even feel the change because I'm necessarily saying this. You feel the change because the stars are actually aligning. And when that happens, it aligns inside of you. This is a, your own personal cosmic celestial alignment. That's why I left in the notes, this may assist in getting you calibrated and aligned just a little bit more or on point with where things are right now so far with the cosmos and what exactly it's looking to get us aware of so that way we can know what our purpose is here. And then also when we're around other people, we can keep them on point, especially if we care about them by being the mature being here. 
the one who knows even these the highest tantras don't they don't I don't need to touch you. There used to be this guy called a tantric mongoose. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen this guy, but this guy would be making the women go into these climaxes by just r- running his hand over the top of them. Maybe oh, it was real. And it's because when you understand how much power is within, this is the minimum of what you can do is to keep someone pleased and attracted. But then you learn as an adept, what am I doing to that person? Am I disempowering them? You got like in the game, you got to make sure that the balance is because if this person is going crazy and now they're committing their, all of who they are to you, I just want you. You're going to pay for that. <laughs> You're going to pay for that in the game one way or another. And this is why it's a check. This check and balance system with this thing is wild. I, like I, I'm baffled by the intelligence of the creation. That's what I was saying is the exploration of the goddess, because even it has a check and balance system. Now, yeah, you go out there, turn up your attraction juice, take all of this literal, sit there and hold back, keep tempering everything. Now everybody's attracted to you. And now because you were just sitting there saying, I just want people to love me. I just want them to like me. And then see just how much trouble that gets you into. You'll be begging back for this state where you hadn't kicked any of that off at all. So that's why they say fools rush in. This is the time that you understand. You learn how this works inside yourself. It definitely works on the external. You see what you're capable of doing this life and beyond. These are life goals for this particular experience. The exploration and the awareness of self, or more importantly in that, or in the right order, the awareness of self. For the divine feminine, the awareness of the power of the goddess, and then the explorer. And through these two things, because they complement each other, there is a every each person has a purpose. Like somebody that the male don't even have a purpose. They like they're just you know they're they're actually uh, what are they call them they're they're de- de- degenerated females. This is the one of the running stories. Actually, no, that's not what's happening. In all this creation, woman's like, I, I got all this abundance. Who's gonna come in? Who's gonna come enjoy it? It's not a problem for me to make it. Who's gonna witness it? If I make dinner, who's gonna eat it? I can grow. 5,000 fruits that take, taste like 5,000 different things. Who's going to eat it? There's a pleasure that comes in, like even when a meal is prepared and someone eats that meal and then they gratify, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a feeling that the one who prepared that meal has, especially as a mother. Do you understand? So the mother, she prepares a meal. When the children sit down and eat it and they say, oh, mother, this is so good. There's a fulfillment coming to both parties. It's only when things are imbalanced where one being feels like, oh, man, I don't want to do this. That means you've got imbalance. That means that somehow you're committing too much or haven't spread enough or got something that's holding you and possessing you. And these are the things that you're looking for in life to make the adjustments that you need to see the future that you want to see and actually to live in the present that you need to be in. So on this imbalanced vibrations. I'm going to let the mics open up. If anybody has anything to say, they can go ahead and say it. I'm not going to take any questions because this stuff is multi-layered. So we'll have to get back on this next week. And, you know, give yourself the time and give yourself the opportunity for self so you can start seeing how to really work with yourself into all this and to put yourself into the best places that you can be in life because it is available now. And I want to leave you with one final awareness. One final awareness is the key to this whole thing. Another key. Remember, I got two hands. I got some ears. I got this brain. Got these legs. And I got a heart. And I even say there's a soul in here. But you do too. And actually quite a few other people do. But that doesn't mean we're all doing the same thing with it. This is the big key. When you start seeing everything going on around you and you start basing everything about what you are doing on everybody else, that's going to be a big error. Because, yes, we all have these eyes and these ears and these brains and this, 
but we're not all using it to do the same thing. This is also where your encouragement comes in because you've been given a great gift. If you can understand any of what I was saying tonight, you got the juice. Do something with it. Use it. Keep increasing yourself. Go into infinity. Realize there's so much beyond this. Like I've been in certain, I've been on certain substances. I've taken certain breaths and went into spaces that have nothing to do with what's going on in this world. And it's functioning and working and everything to prove there's something going on beyond all of this. But let's focus on right here because this is the gift that's being immediately given to us. This is the meal that is on the table right now. And there's so much potential here. You've even just began to explore. And that's what I got. So wholeness and balance vibrations. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much also for being a conduit for this information. Again, if there was only one of us here, you know, maybe I don't show up, but there's so many of us right now. It's 156 of us on the line right now. You know, it's Friday night. We could be any, we could be anywhere. We could be doing anything. And where we're at is we're investing in self. So it's going to pay off. It's paying off at every single moment. So here we go. That's what it is.